Hello everyone, I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. Welcome to today's episode of Dr. Ozello's Sports Medicine Report. Today I'm going to cover spondylolisthesis. Yes, that is a big, huge word, spondylolisthesis. I'm going to speak about what exactly spondylolisthesis is, some of the sports that can cause it, some of the activities that can cause it, the symptoms of this condition. I'm gonna talk about imaging a little bit, and I'm also gonna talk about treatment that can be performed by a doctor of chiropractic, and also procedures that you can do yourself to help with this condition. Spondylolisthesis is the forward translation of a vertebrae as compared to vertebrae below it. It is most common in the lower lumbar spine at L5-S1. This means that the L5 vertebrae has moved forward as compared to the sacrum. Now there are several terms that sound a lot like spondylolisthesis, so I'm gonna go over those. Again, spondylolisthesis is the forward translation of a vertebrae as compared to the vertebrae below it. Spondylosis, is a general term for spinal degeneration or osteoarthritis. Spondylolysis is a defect or stress fracture in the pars interarticularis of the vertebral arch. But again, today's class is on spondylolisthesis. The populations most commonly affected by spondylolisthesis are children and adolescents participating in sports that require repetitive lower back extension. That means bending backwards. These sports include diving, baseball, softball, rugby, weightlifting, sailing, table tennis, wrestling, gymnastics, dancing, and football. These young athletes usually present with low back pain exacerbated by activity. Occasionally pain can radiate into the gluteal area and to the legs. In advanced cases, the gait pattern and walking distance will be affected. Spondylolisthesis in adults usually has an insidious onset and is commonly associated with long-standing degenerative changes secondary to the vertebrae's forward translation, often leading to spinal canal stenosis and radicular symptoms. The symptoms of spondylolisthesis include a deep ache in the lumbar spine, Ridicular pain, which can be sharp shooting shock-like pain or numbness, tingling, or burning into the gluteal area, the hamstrings, the lower legs, and feet. These symptoms are aggravated by standing, walking, and lumbar spine extension. There may be numbness, tingling, and fatigue in the legs, especially after walking. And the symptoms are lessened by sitting, especially in a reclining position. There may be pain during lumbar spine active and passive range of motions, especially in lumbar extension. There may be pain, tenderness, muscle tightness, and trigger points upon palpation of the lumbar paraspinal muscles. There is usually hypertonicity in the hamstrings, meaning that the hamstring muscles are very tight. There is possible increased knee flexion and hip flexion when walking with shorter strides. There is usually an increased lumbar curvature when viewed from the side and an anterior pelvic tilt. And there can be pain when the person is standing on one leg and bending backwards. Disclaimer alert, disclaimer alert, please, Remember that watching this video does not take the place of seeing a medical professional. Please see a medical professional if you have any of the signs and symptoms of spondylolisthesis or any other conditions. When you start any type of rehabilitation, prevention, or exercise program, always start at your current health, fitness, and strength levels progress in small, gradual, calculated increments. Always perform all exercises through a symptom-free range of motion. If an exercise elicits or intensifies symptoms, please stop immediately and find a viable substitute. Again, viewing this video does not take the place of seeing a medical professional. 
So please see a medical professional if you think you have spotty low lithesis. X-rays are a very useful tool. They're going to help us view the overall structure of the lumbar spine and pelvis, and they will be helpful in finding a fracture. Lateral views of the lumbar spine, meaning taken from the side, help us to determine the classification of spotty low lithesis. There are five grades of classification of spotty low lithesis. These classifications are graded by measuring the percentage the superior vertebrae has moved forward on the vertebral body of the inferior vertebrae. Grade one is up to 25%. Grade two is 26 to 50%. Grade three is 51% to 75%. Grade four is 76% to 100%. And grade five is greater than 100%. This is called spinylopetosis. The classifications of spinylolithesis are seen on a lateral lumbar x-ray. So you compare the translation of the superior vertebrae on the inferior vertebrae, and you look at the back part of the vertebral body, and then you'd compare it to the back part of the vertebral body of the inferior vertebrae. And you look at the top of the inferior vertebrae, and that is where the classifications come up. Again, grades one through five. There are five types of spinylolithesis. Type one is named dysplastic. This is a congenital defect in the pars interarticularis. Type two actually has three parts to it. Type two is called the isthmus and it is due to a pars fracture. And this is the most common type of spondylolithesis. 2A is a pars fatigue fracture. 2B is a pars elongation due to multiple healed stress fractures. 2C is an acute fracture of the pars interarticularis. Type three is degenerative. Spinylolithesis from degenerative facet instability without a pars fracture. This occurs when spinal bones, joints, and ligaments become weak and less able to support the vertebrae. This is common in seniors and more common in females than males. Type four is traumatic. This is due to an acute posterior arch fracture other than a pars interarticularis fracture. And type five, is named neoplastic, and this is a pathologic destruction of the pars. As a doctor of chiropractic, I have treated many cases of spondylolithesis. First of all, we have to make sure that if there is a fracture, that that fracture is healed and that fracture is stable. If that fracture is healed and stable, then the area can be adjusted and muscle work can be performed and flexion distraction can be performed. If you do go see a doctor of chiropractic for spondylolithesis, most likely the chiropractic treatment will be performed if the vertebral segment is stable and the fracture is healed. An adjustment or mobilization will be performed to the spine and lower extremities. Most likely the doctor will target the lumbar spine, the sacroiliac joints, the pelvis, the hips, and the lower extremities, and a gentle technique will most likely be used. Other treatments that can be performed would be flexion distraction, manual traction, soft tissue work to the lumbar spine, pelvis, hips, and thighs to the patient's tolerance, and stretching to the lumbar spine, pelvis, hips, and thighs. In most cases, strengthening the core muscles, especially the abdominal muscles, will help with spondylolithesis and stretching the low back will help with spondylolithesis. You always want to start your exercises at your current health, fitness, and strength levels. You can perform exercises such as the supine pelvic tilt. This is going to help to strengthen the rectus abdominis muscles and other muscles in the core. And you can advance to the dead bug exercise. You can also perform abdominal bracing. These are exercises 
that will help to strengthen the core and especially the abdominal muscles. You can also perform exercises such as abdominal hollowing, which is the medical name for a stomach vacuum. And you could also perform a stretching exercise where you are moving the knees towards the chest. And you perform that supine and you can do it both legs at a time or you could do it one leg at a time. Again, the exercises that may help you with spondylolisthesis are core strengthening exercises, especially strengthening the abdominal muscles. These exercises include the supine pelvic tilt, the dead bug, abdominal bracing, and abdominal hollowing. You could also perform the abdominal drawing in maneuver. That is going to help to strengthen the deeper core muscles, especially the transverse abdominis. And you could also stretch the lower back by laying supine and slowly bringing the knees to the chest. Anytime you perform a stretching exercise, you want to move into the stretch slowly and hold a mild, comfortable stretch, then move out of the stretch slowly. Never perform an exercise that elicits or intensifies symptoms. If an exercise elicits or intensifies symptoms, you want to stop immediately and find a viable substitute. You can work with a certified strength and conditioning coach or a certified fitness trainer to develop a routine that works best for your individual needs. You could learn a great deal by working with a doctor of chiropractic or by working with a certified strength and conditioning coach or a certified fitness trainer. Thank you everybody for viewing today's episode of Dr. Lozella Sports Medicine Report, where I went over the serious condition of spondylolisthesis. Again, spondylolisthesis is when a vertebrae has moved forward as compared to the vertebrae above it and the vertebrae below it. My name is Donald Lozello. I am a doctor of chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. My practice is called Championship Chiropractic. I am the author of Running, maximize performance and minimize injuries. You can visit my website, championshipchiropractic.com, where you can find additional information on the book and you can also find my blog. My blog contains articles on spine health, chiropractic care, sports medicine, exercise, fitness, and nutrition. So I wanna thank everybody for watching today's video. Please feel free to like this video. If you have questions, suggestions, or feedback, please leave them in the comment section below. Please subscribe to my YouTube page and always remember to train hard, but train smart and get adequate rest between your training sessions. Utilize nutritional and supplementation strategies that work for you. Stay injury free, rehabilitate all of your injuries and accomplish your goals.